Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and in this video I wanna do something a little bit dangerous. You know, I know I'm a little bit late to like the Invincible stuff and all that kind of stuff, but I wanna cover the secret history of the Viltrumite race, right? Like, this stuff you don't know, because it's really cool, right? The Viltrumite race is super cool. Some of these things you might see in season two, just FYI, if you guys are trying to avoid spoilers, I mean, I don't really think it's anything major with regards to like what direction the storyline takes or anything like that. It's just like little things that you learn over the course of the Invincible series, right? So, um, so let's kind of start things back with like the early days of the Viltrumite race, right? So what you had was a guy named Lord Argal. And this guy was the emperor, right? He was the guy who ran the show, the whole nine yards. What ended up happening as we know, and as you guys have seen from the show, or if you've read the comics, which I don't know why you wouldn't be reading the comics, but you should buy and read the comics. Uh, what you end up getting here is basically the, the Viltrumite race being transformed into a kind of planet conquering race, right? So like, what if Superman and the Kryptonians conquered worlds, right? That's kind of what the answer to that question is. And so what ends up happening here is that there is opposition to the idea of the Viltrumites conquering different worlds, right? Becoming this conquering race. And this opposition is led by a man named Thaddeus. And so Thaddeus essentially becomes the first Viltrumite to essentially stand against the throne, which is punishable by death, but he's the first person to stand against the throne and then essentially incite rebellion by gathering those people to his side who are against what the Viltrumites are doing and then fighting and, and kind of waging a war against the emperor. We call this the Viltrumite Civil War. And so following that, Thaddeus was successful in killing Lord Argal, but not before Lord Argal produced an heir. And so what ends up happening is that Thaddeus ultimately takes off as soon as that happens, because he knows the entirety of the Viltrumite race will come after him. Now understand, the Viltrumite race does not have it out for Thaddeus because Thaddeus left them throneless. They have it out for him because he killed the Emperor. One of the big things about the Viltrumite race is they don't really care who sits on the throne. They care about royal blood, right? They are, they, they swear their allegiance to the royal family. So if, for example, you have a character who we'll talk about here in a minute, if you have a character who kind of steps in and basically killed Lord Argal himself, and then in turn took the throne, the Viltrumites would kill him because he's not actually of royal blood. And so in their mind, he doesn't deserve the right to rule, right? So in the aftermath of this, there were a few things that happened, right? The the existing numbers of the Viltrumites that, that, that survived the civil war and the purge were reduced even further by something that was called the Scourge Virus. Now, the Scourge Virus was thought up by what was referred to as the Coalition of Planets. And the Coalition of Planets were formed by Thaddeus. That when Thaddeus defected and then left Viltrum after killing uh, Lord Argal, he came to the realization that it's likely somebody else is going to rise to power, even if only in a temporary measure, until the heir of Lord Argal is found. And when that happens, the Viltrumite race will be back to business as usual if they're not already continuing their business at that point in time. And so in order to combat the influence and the possibility of the Viltrumite race conquering various worlds, the Coalition of Planets was formed as a means to kind of offset that, to travel around all of creation and gather individuals who were loyal to the anti-Viltrum uh, ideologies, and then at the same time, find individuals powerful enough to protect worlds from the Viltrumites themselves, who could essentially fight them off. And so it was kind of like this secret war that was taking place between these two factions behind the scenes. Now, the Scourge virus itself did kind of come from the DNA of Thaddeus. And so the Scourge virus basically reduced the, uh, the Viltrum population all the way down to like less than 50, right? So there were basically almost none left. And so what the what the Viltrumite race started doing is they started working on the idea of repopulating, right? Kind of growing their ranks and numbers back up. And all this happened under the purview of what is definitively the strongest Viltrumite. And not just the strongest Viltrumite, but the strongest one to ever exist, right? So stronger than Omni-Man, stronger than Mark, stronger than all those guys. This dude comes in the form of a guy named Thrag. And Thrag is a demon. This guy is a, he's, he is a monster. To give you guys perspective on this, right? To give you guys perspective on what this guy can do. The, there's a point that comes in the story when Mark faces off against Thrag and goes to attack him and nothing happens. It does no good whatsoever. Nolan steps in and it's pretty much the same thing, right? Like Nolan's not really able to do much damage to this guy. Now, eventually Battle Beast shows up and Battle Beast starts facing off against Thrag and the two of them are actually super even. Like it's, it's kind of nuts. And the battle goes on for days. Ultimately, Battle 
Battle Beast is defeated and then Thrag kind of just returns and then works on sort of bringing their numbers back up and and, and helping the entire, uh, you know, Viltrumite population reach, uh, reach a, a higher number so they can actually initiate a campaign in the aftermath of what we called the Viltrumite War. It's a cool concept, right? But that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes. Now, looking at a character like Alan the Alien, this guy's really interesting because Alan the Alien is an experiment. That's the nature behind Alan the Alien. The idea was to essentially create a race of people that could stand against the Viltrumites that could either be equal or greater to them in power. Ultimately, Alan the Alien is the only one who really demonstrated any measure of strength that was even remotely close to the Viltrumites. He's not as strong as them, or at least he was not originally, but he was still stronger than pretty much everybody else. Now, eventually, his power starts to grow as time goes on to the point where he is actually equal to the Viltrumites in power. But that's where Alan the Alien comes from. Everybody else that you see is just kind of either characters who have joined like Guardians of the Globe because of their own individual powers, uh, characters who have joined the Coalition of Planets, like for example, Battle Beast ends up becoming part of the Coalition of Planets. But but yeah, like there's a lot that goes on in the Invincible comics. Here's the question that I kind of have for you guys. Do you want to see me cover these Invincible characters, right? Like, are you guys interested in that kind of stuff? I don't know if you guys want me to do like, you know, Omni-Man Explained, Invincible Explained, any of that kind of stuff. I'm kind of curious, but it's cool, right? It's it's it's, an, it's a super interesting set of events. But Thrag, to kind of, kind of you know, uh, nip this and, and to focus on this a little bit more, Thrag is the answer to the question, who is the most powerful of the Viltrumites that exist out there, right? Like, who's the most powerful of all those guys? It really is him, right? It really is that guy. His power is, is absolute. There does come a point when ultimately he is turned on by the Viltrumites. And again, it's, it's a pretty cool moment when it happens, but he's probably also one of the more interesting characters in Invincible. I think, if I'm being honest, and I know this is going to be kind of a dangerous game, I think he's more interesting than Omni-Man and Mark, right? I think he's more interesting than both of those guys. He doesn't nearly have as much character development because he's not he's not around nearly as long as the rest of those guys. But I think he is more interesting than pretty much any of those guys. But that's kind of the, the secret history of the Viltrumites. Again, like, you know, Invincible is only 144 issues long, right? So there's not, there, there's really more focus that's put on a lot of the characters who exist out there now than there is in pretty much anybody else. But let me know what you guys think, right? Do you guys want me to expand on these characters? Do you want me to expand on, on all the different members of the roster and the characters that we have yet to see? Let me know down in the comment section. Uh, but if you guys are new here to Comments Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.